Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Ryan and in today's video we're going to look at Docker as requested by my friend Sani. So Sani here's uh, your request. If we go to my terminal here you can see that I have prepared some notes as to what Docker is. It's a set of platform as a service or pass products that use OS level virtualization to deliver software in packages called containers. So I first heard of Docker back in 2016 from the Raspberry Pi foundations in one of their blogs and this is the blog entry and as you can see they defined it as it's a method of packaging software to include not only your code but also other components such as a full file system, system tools, services, and libraries. All right, so it's some kind of um, virtualization, although it says here that it's a type of OS level virtualization, and that's a bit different from the full virtualization that we know, such as the virtual box, because from here it says OS level virtualization is an operating system paradigm in which the kernel allows the existence of multiple isolated user space instances called containers and if we go to <coughs> Wikipedia uh, it also says here that um, OS level of uh, virtualization usually imposes less overhead than the full virtualization because programs in OS level virtual partitions use the operating system's normal system call interface and do not need to be subjected to emulation or be run in an intermediate virtual machine so it's uh, so the programs are executing in the user space um, thereby making it more um, lightweight and tiny so to get a better understanding of what docker is maybe we should go to the docker overview from their website to have a better understanding we can go to docker.com and click on developers and then select docs <laughs> okay so over here on their docs I click on the guides tab to go to the docker overview and here you'll find the docker architecture and the different components that make up the that make up docker so we have here the docker daemon the docker client Docker desktop, the Docker registries, and the Docker objects. So um, the Docker daemon is actually the program that runs in the background, takes care of uh, the virtualization in the Docker engine. Uh, well, the Docker client is where we uh, type our commands that we want Docker to do. The Docker desktop, however, I haven't yet tried, but I think it includes a GUI uh, and the docker registry on the other hand is where docker stores the docker images which leads us to uh, the most important concept that we need to know about docker which is the docker objects it's composed of the Docker images in the containers. It says here that the Docker image is a read-only template with instructions for creating a Docker container, while a Docker container is a runnable instance of that image. So this is best understood with the use of an example. So to do that, let's install Docker first. So go back to home and uh, click on download and install then select your operating system over here on the menu 
I'm gonna select Linux since I'm on a Linux machine and then on the sidebar uh, we're interested in installing the docker the docker engine instead of the docker desktop all right so scroll down and select docker engine choose install and from the drop down select your distribution i'm going to select ubuntu and over here it provides you with the different methods of installing it on ubuntu i've um, chosen to install it using the um, convenience script but you can also install it um, using other methods such as um, through app through the app repository and uh, I think they also have a, they also have a dev file but that's for docker desktop though okay so if you you um, install it using the convenience script like me you can just copy and paste this uh, code here and then open your terminal and paste it on there I'm not going to install it again because I already have it on my system okay so after installing docker on your computer you have to add the user your user account to the docker group so you can do that with sudo chmod and then dash a capital G docker and then dollar user or just type your username directly and then hit return and then reboot your machine otherwise you won't be able to use a docker or you'll encounter some problems okay so the best way to uh, check your that uh, you have successfully uh, installed a docker on your machine is to run the hello world uh, docker image so to do that it, it, all you have to do is type docker run hello world this will produce the following output um, so it the output uh, shown here on my screen might be different from the one you will see on your system if it's your first time to install docker because I already have the hello world image um, installed or downloaded into my docker registry as we can see right here if we type docker images okay so I have here a uh, list of uh, docker images stored in my docker registry so I have the image uh, hello world and the WordPress image and if we type docker ps-a we get a list of containers that are currently running or has already exited and the following information is provided the container ID image command created status ports and names so if we go back to our docker overview from the guides here and if we go down to the docker objects we, we know that we have our images and containers and these are what I have here are examples of that so here the container affectionate Edison is the instance of of the image hello world as seen right here and the uh, container some WordPress is an instance of uh, the image WordPress that I have created a while ago so about 12 hours ago and lastly the BC Kilby is also 
was an instance of hello world okay so again um, remember that uh, the images that we have here are read only while the containers are the uh, instance of those images that contains our uh, programs all right so you might be wondering what's with those names affectionate Edison and busy Kilby those names are actually created by docker because we didn't specify or um, explicitly name our containers so he had to uh, assign a name for it so it created one for us and as we can um, know uh, see here all of our containers have already stopped running so to delete a uh, container uh, we all we have to do is to type docker rm for remove and then the name of the container that we want to uh, delete we can also delete uh, containers at the same time by typing uh, the names of the names of the containers one after the other and this command will delete all the containers okay so if we type docker ps a again we can see now that our we we don't have any containers anymore on the other hand if we would like to delete the hello world image we can type docker rm and then i remove image and then here instead of using the repository name we can we have to um, use the image id which is composed of a string of characters alphanumeric char characters and just uh, four characters would be enough to um, remove the image so copy that and paste it and then enter if we type docker images again you can see that uh, hello world uh, image has already been removed or deleted okay so this is getting a little bit silly and you want to know why why do we need to um, run or download uh, images and run containers on docker right okay so i'm gonna show you a concrete example so you can um, go to docker hub by typing this address and um, on the docker hub you can search for images let's say we're gonna want to uh, look for hello world and you can see that it shows results of different images available for you to pull from the repository and this is actually the hello world that we uh, run earlier and if we click on that you can see um, the shortcut to uh, get the image here docker pool hello world and then it provides some overview on how to use the image all right so now uh, let's uh, try wordpress and click on the docker official image and if you scroll down uh, you can see that it provides some commands on how to run a uh, word a basic wordpress setup on docker so i'm going to use the second command down here although let's i think uh, let's just go over the first command quickly so what this does is um, says uh, docker to run and then dash dash name some wordpress it, it tells docker to run and a container and name it some wordpress and then dash dash network 
and then some network that uh, that is because uh, Docker lets us specify a network uh, optionally and then dash D uh, tells uh, Docker to detach from the container and last uh, word here is WordPress is the image that we want to um, run okay so we're not going to use that I'm going to use the second command instead so I'm going to copy that copy and paste it on my terminal so what, what's this going to do is um, run a container named some WordPress so let's, let's just uh, call my WordPress my my docker wp and then the dash p option uh, tells docker to open ports 8080 for the host and colon 80 is the default port for the container the dash d again it uh, tells docker to detach from the container and WordPress is the base image that we want to use okay so I'm gonna uh, hit return and this is going to try and run the WordPress image if it doesn't find it on my uh, repository then it's going to pull it from the docker hub alright so let's uh, run uh, let's uh, type docker ps a to check um, our container and as we can see uh, it has a container ID uh, e 0117 and the image is WordPress and the command uh, was docker dash entry point dot sh it's a script file uh, that contains all the commands to set up the WordPress um, container and it was created 21 seconds ago and still running it's still up now um, this one is uh, tells uh, that it's accessible inside the local area network at port 8080 and it's pointing to the to port 80 of the container all right and it it is named my docker wp okay so let's try and open a um, private window here and try and access it uh, through port 8080 and as you can see uh, we were able to put up a basic wordpress setup with just one line of command okay so now you might have some idea on how this might be useful in the real world application docker allows you uh, to run this command on any platform oops may it be a uh, windows mac or linux or in the cloud uh, digital ocean AWS or or Oracle as long as docker is installed uh, this command runs WordPress and it will always have the same result so this is exactly why docker was created to um, for this purpose uh, to package up, up codes and programs so that the users will ha not have to worry about configuring things and um, worrying about the environment variables and dependencies and all so it's all set up and cross-platform you can actually also create your own image um, by creating another layer on top of another image but that's for another video and I, I have I also have to mention that 
you can also run uh, multiple containers at the same time like for example we're running um, WordPress container here and we can actually create another container for the database or uh, my MySQL database and then connect it to this container in simple words um, you can create uh, multiple containers that depend on each other all you have to do is specify it on the docker file and the docker file is actually a the file that uh, contains the instructions on how to build the image to stop our container just type uh, docker stop and then the docker name uh, the container name my docker wp and then if we docker ps dash a again you can see that uh, the container has now been stopped to start it again just type docker start and then the container name and if we docker ps a again we can see that the container has been restarted okay so that's it for docker if you have any questions please post it down on the comment section below and on our next video we're going to um, create a Django application and an example docker file to uh, create our own um, image of the Django application that we made aka dockerize our Django and um, also explore uh, docker compose which uh, simplifies the uh, simplifies the creation of multiple containers that depends on each other all right so there you go docker